they talk to you about the blades specifically. Briefly, I mean, we'll uh, hopefully impart knowledge about the theory of the day as well. Um, but I'll just quickly talk about what we're trying to achieve. Um, said it a few times during that that we've been perfecting this design for the last few years. In fact, the first time we've um, used the design that's now been superseded. Um, I don't know if you're all sort of fully aware, but Hugh Piggott um, produces this book called How to Build a Wind Turbine or Wind Turbine Recipe Book and Changes and stuff. But he reissues it every few years and he's, he's changed the design since the Nazi WB and in fact since this blade was made. So try and ignore it a bit, but it's quite useful for what we're trying to do. Um, so the first stage, as, as has already happened to this one, um, is to take this taper down. Um, that's to make the blades thinner at the tip uh, than it is at the root. And that's pretty much because this is um, moving quite a lot faster uh, and interacting with a lot more air than the root bit is for, a similar, for one revolution. Um, so it needs less wood. Uh, it's the same reason why it's thinner in that plane and, and, and pretty much the same thickness as the wood at the root. Um, so it's all about tapering uh, and open shape. It's also, um, this is kind of makes it a bit easy to see, there's a twist associated with this, this face. So that's probably where we're going to get with most of today is to put that first initial twist in. And you can see at the tip here, my hand is pretty much flat with respect to this bit of the untouched wood there. But if I slide it along, by the time it gets here, it's pretty much at sort of 45 degrees, well, about 30 degrees there. Um, we won't be putting this notch on, so get, don't get quite so confused by that. Um, but it will still be at quite a sharp angle by the time it gets to the root, quite flat surface there. I can go into explaining why that is. I probably won't now because it involves me drawing out diagrams. I've got a whiteboard, but we had a lunch break of yeah, dynamics. We can talk about that a bit later on as to why we're putting that twist in. Um, it's again associated with the fact that this is moving faster than that bit, so that the angle of attack needs to be different um, in order to make the force all act in the same direction, which is the different incoming speeds. But, um, makes a bit more sense with a few diagrams. So putting that face in um, and then making the back face move parallel with it. So if they're getting wider, if you watch my hands are actually staying parallel with each other at every long point, the two faces are flat. It's a bit confusing because then after that, this back face has had the sort of famous aerofoil curve on one side, fin on the back. So that's a final stage you put in, but it's essentially two twisting surfaces like that. And it would work as a blade like that if you just had to, had to switch. In fact, it would work as if you didn't twist, if you just had an angle, um, you'd have strange forces in different directions. So the aerofoil is just to let it speed up and go faster than the, the window is actually hitting now. Anyway, for today, we're going to um, get them all, all, all the box of wood shaped down like this and sort of smooth them off with hand tools and make it a bit of a nut, neat surface. But then the way you get that twisting surface is, and in fact the way you progress with the whole blade is to divide it up into these six sections. So you draw lines evenly spaced at 200 mil um, like that. And at each of those sections, you mark on dimensions onto this newly cut face. So at the tip, it's called a drop, um, and it's how far you're dropping down from that top surface. So at the tip, it's only a few mil, and then at the next one, it's a bit more, and the next one, it's a bit more. And until all the way down here, it's the full width of the blade is dropped. And then you join all those up dot to dot and create this line here. And this top edge here remains exactly the same, so that's completely untouched. That edge, although it's been battered about a bit, um, is the same edge of the original piece of wood. So that's staying the same. And this front edge is now a new edge. And we cut down to that line. And we're going to do that with a, a technique called curfing, uh, which I only learned the name of quite recently. Uh, but that's where you use a saw to chop down um, lines through the wood that kind of meet that line without quite reaching it and meet the line you've drawn on that surface without quite reaching it. So you kind of draw on through the blade, because if you've got a pencil, and you're just using a chisel to, to knock all those notch at the sort of blocks out. Um, and that will take us up to lunch. Possibly <laughs> next week um, because it's ash, it's quite hard wood, it's, it's beautiful wood to work with. But um, these are ash as well, and it, it, it will just take us a while. Um, but it's worth not rushing it um, because we've brought along some blades that have got to that stage and a little bit beyond for you guys to see how, how, to, how to work on them and, and do some of the final techniques. 
Um, we'll talk a bit about what happens after that when we get to it. Yeah, um, the thing with blades is to take, take your time and um, measure twice, cut once, um, and make them nice. Like they're really important bit of the, the, the wind turbine, obviously, because it converts all of the winds power into rotational energy and every little dink or scratch or millimetre that you go over you get less of the wind efficiently converted into useful power at the end. <coughs> so it's all about taking your time. We'll go through the tools that we're going to use um, now. Can you quickly yeah, yeah. go through. Um, this is pretty standard, I'm sure most of you have seen it before. It's a chisel um, and we're going to be using that with, um, with mallets to literally chisel out when you're using it, um, it's got a, uh, um, a chamfer on the, the edge. Um, you want to have that face down so that when you mallet it, it chisels the wood up. If you have it that face up, when you mallet, mallet it in, it pulls down into the wood. So you just use it that way up and then that chips away and you get a, a flat line. Um, there are certain times where you do need to use the flat surface, but that's for like really, really fine things where you've kind of got lots of control and you're doing across a flat surface anyway. So for everything we'll be doing today, you'll, you'll be wanting to yeah, use it as a scoop because it shines on the side of the course. Yeah, scoops up. Um, this is a plane. Um, I'm sure you've most of you've seen this before. So doing flat surfaces. Um, so for example, this one's just been cut on a bandsaw, and we're going to be using the plane just to get it nice and flat and smooth. Um, two hands, one with one hand behind it, and just get a, a smooth, um, a smooth action. Uh, We'll, we'll probably be like we'll be on hand for one-to-one -one tuition. One thing with the planes is just leave them when you put them on the table leave them on their side rather than on the the bottom because uh, that damages the blade. Really important. Um, the other tools, the most exciting tools. Um, uh, it's a draw knife. Now a lot of you might not have seen this before actually. Um, it's quite an old fashioned tool that they used to carve like um, chairs out of and, and wheel, like, wheels and spokes as well. Spokes and wheels, yeah. Well. So proper, proper old school carpentry. Um, and it's called a draw knife because you draw it towards you. Towards you and your internal organs. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Again, with the, the same as the chisel, you put the, um, the chamfer face down. Um, and when you're using it, you go from side to side as well as down. So it's sort of a um, diagonal motion. So as you're pulling towards you, you're also pulling across. And that sort of slices the wood. So this, this edge, um, the wood sees it all the way down. So it's like you're almost cutting with the saw, but you're pulling down as well. And that lifts off really nice bits of ch chunks of wood as they, they slide up. Um, but it's, it takes a bit of getting used to, and it's, um, as with all the things, a bit of practice. So you're, you're going to be getting into a rhythm and um, taking off nice bits. It's, it's really good for doing the aerofoil and most of the sections. Like if you just had one of these, you could probably do the whole blade, but it speeds things up with some electric power tools. Um, it's also